Here we're going to tie a little streamer called the Vanilla Bugger. It's a variation of the Wooly Bugger. First thing you want to do is you want to start off with a black large cone head. You want to add some O2O or 025 lead wire to the shank of the hook. And then you're just going to wrap through all this lead wire several times with uh, spiraling wraps to really tighten it down and keep it from rolling. Once you've got your lead wire all covered up, we're going to take two pieces of either Wooly Bugger or Extra Select Marabou in the color tan. This will be for our tail. We want our tail to be about the length of the shank of the hook. So I just roughly measure it out. Then I'm just going to take a loose wrap and grab that Marabou. Then I'll tighten down with a couple more tight wraps. Once you have it wrapped down, we're going to take our scissors here. We're just going to trim out the butt ends of that Marabou. Then we can really bite down with our thread and secure those butt ends. You want to make sure to trim out any extra shag that you have. And clean it up. Now the next thing to do is to tie in a little bit of flash. We're going to take two strands of pearl crystal flash. We're going to tie right in the middle of the two strands, leave them nice and long. I'm going to leave part of the two strands hanging out the front and part of the two strands hanging off the back. I'm going to wrap back all the way to the tail. Then I'm going to take my crystal flash that's hanging off the front and just pull it to the other side and tie in my two strips on the other side. Then I'll really make sure everybody's tight. We can trim our crystal flash so it's just a hair longer than our, our tail. Now we're going to tie in our rib. We're going to tie in a piece of small or brassy, either one, copper wire. I'm going to tie it in all the way back to the tail. Then we're going to tie in our body material. We're going to use some cream colored furry foam. I've cut into a nice long strip, about five, six inches long. You want it to be about half of the gap of the hook, half of the width of the gap. We're going to tie this in right at the back. Then we're going to take our thread forward all the way up to the cone. We're going to take this furry foam. We're going to pull, oopsie, pull a little too hard. Tie it in here again for you. And when we wrap this, we want to pull it so that it leaves a nice tight body, but you don't want to pull too hard as you saw what I just did. You can pull it and break it. So I pull it tight so that it all just kind of blends together. Once we get up to the head, I'm just going to capture that furry foam. Trim out the excess. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to tie in our hackle. I'm going to use a Coque de Leon feather. There's two other feathers that you can use. Uh, just a standard badger feather or a dark bar ginger feather. I like the Coque de Leon because it has this beautiful speckling pattern, but what you're looking for is a dark uh, little uh, seam on the stem with light fibers coming off of that. Just like a badger, Coque de Leon is very similar, except it has that beautiful speckling pattern. We're just going to tie this Coque de Leon feather right at the front of the fly. You can use hackle pliers. That makes it a little easier on you to wrap this Coque de Leon. I'm going to do one full wrap right at the head and then we're going to spiral back. I can already tell this one's not quite long enough for me. 
pull out a little bit longer feather here. These usually come in a whiting tailing pack with lots of different feathers, so if one's not uh, quite to suit, you can just find another. There's plenty of them on the patch. I just try to select one of the longer ones that will be good for wrapping a collar. Once I have a nice long one selected, I'm going to prepare the feather just by peeling off some of the, the fuzzies right at the butt end of it. And I'll trim a bare stem here so I can tie it in. And I like to tie it in so that the natural curve of the feather is facing back down the shank of the hook. You can see how that curve is facing backwards. I do not want that curve to face forwards. That's why I tie it in with the curve facing back. Nice tight wraps to secure it up front. Then again, we're going to take that feather, and I like to do a full wrap. You can even do two wraps right up by the front. And then nice big spiraling wraps as we go back. And use your hackle pliers to help you get it all the way back there. There we go. If you come up a little short, we'll just make our spirals a little bit larger. There we go. And then to finish the fly, we're going to take our copper wire. We're going to segment the body and also capture all that Coke de Leon and keep it from coming unraveled on us. Then we capture that copper wire right at the head. Capture it with some nice tight wraps. Need to trim or spiral the wire out of there. Then you can whip finish. Trim out your thread. Then you want to trim out the little piece of tag end feather that you have hanging off the back then you can just co coax all those fibers rearward get them to lay back nice and that's all there is to the vanilla bugger very effective fly here in Colorado imitates a small juvenile trout or a sucker minnow and you can find all the materials to tie this fly on our website in the riffle.com. If you're watching this via YouTube, there is a link right below this video in the description that you can follow to our website, and there you can find recipe information as well as the materials to tie the fly. And that is the vanilla bugger.